At this point, I today do not know uh, what it was, in fact, that we saw. But when we got back to the hotel, uh, the motel, that night, Paul said that um, he, about a half hour, 45 minutes, something like that, after he fell asleep, he woke up totally awake and something picked him up, actually picked him up and set him up in bed involuntarily. And the moment he sat up, a light came on over his head like a little dim night light. And he looked up to see an alien's face with the, 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 the typical alien's face with the bubble eyes, but it was glowing and you could see through it. You could see the ceiling through it as if it were a hologram of some kind. And it was glowing looking at him and he said it slid across the ceiling, went across the ceiling hit the wall and came down to where it was even with him sitting in bed. It went through the wall and disappeared. But Ivy, in my room, was laying so that she could see the, the, uh, the door. And she said she saw the glowing on the wall, but she couldn't tell what the light was because it wasn't very bright. And she said, but when she opened her eyes to see the, 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 the glowing of the light in Paul's room, which was the face on the wall, a little red, tiny little red dot of light came through the, Paul's room and came in and hovered over her. Um, the band leader says, how long have you fellas been involved with sorcery? <laughs> and he chalked us a little bit and I said, exactly what do you mean? Well, he said, you know, what you people are doing, talking to the supposed spirits of the dead, he says, this is, this is, this is silly. And this man had been at the seance with you. Yeah, oh yeah. And he's telling you that it's silly what you've yeah. just done. Because see, my wife, he says, goes to the seances because she gets comfort and she gets uh, something good out of it, good feeling out of it. And she lives for what the spirits of the, you know, are going to see that the future is going to be like. To me, he says, I can't bother with this stuff. He says, I want power. I go right to the source of power. And he says, how do you think that I became famous the way that I am? Well, I said, you must have had some good luck. Well, he says, there's no such thing as good luck. He says, there's either some power working for you somewhere, or you don't get ahead in this world. Not in my, my type of occupation. So um, it, it went from there that we, went, we got talking about uh, spirit worship. Did it intrigue you? Or did it make you want to find out more about what exactly he was talking about? Yeah. So he said the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with are demon spirits. You're fallen angels. Beautiful beings. Just set it out, just like. Oh that. yeah. It didn't make you uneasy when he said they were. Well, you know, it shocked you a little bit, you know, something that you first hear uh, uh, mentioned to you. He said, uh, "You guys have got a great future ahead of you, because we've been told the high priest of our society, secret society, has been told that the master has very special plans for you too." Now, what did he mean by the master? Uh, Satan. And uh, we were interested to hear more about it. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did before they were cast out of heaven. He says, there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing, he says, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says, our master was misunderstood. Your friend, George, took you and Roland to this mansion where people worshipped the demons. Mm -hmm. What was it like there? What kind of people were there? Well, it was a big surprise for me as I kind of made up my mind an idea that they were going to be rough-looking characters. But as we entered the place, I was amazed to see that they were all very well-dressed, well-mannered, and that a lot of the people, as we were in, being introduced to people, were professionals, doctors, attorneys, 
a lot of business people. And see what they had? They had a praise session to the gods, which is the uh, spirit counselors, which are in charge of legions of, of spirits. See what they had? They had a praise session to the gods, which is the uh, spirit counselors which are in charge of legions of, of spirits. Wow. Mention of all mortal wisdom. Our Bohemia, we beseech thee, grant us thy counsel. So how did you feel when you walked into that room? I um, felt that uh, these people had power, and they had a lot of it. Did that attract you? Uh, yes and no. You had mixed feelings about it. I had mixed it. feelings about it. Yeah. Because to a certain extent, things looked so good and sounded so good to us. People believe that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence than they had when they were alive. Also, that they are in a position and have the capacity to help the living here on earth. See? And you take, for instance, like uh, Loretta Lynn. She owes, she says on national television, and uh, I have the data on it, that, that, that I heard it myself. She said that she was made successful in her singing career by a dear friend of hers that was the same age as she, and died when she was 18 years of age. And L uh, Loretta was trying to get into the, the singing world, you know, but it, it, it would, she says, I had no success at all. Until one night I was uh, sitting in bed reading a book. And she says, who walks right through the wall but my, my friend, the spirit of my friend? And she says, Loretta, I'm going to make you a very famous person in singing Western uh, country music. And I will be with you all the time. Trust me. Now, the priest explained that when people believe in uh, this business, they are actually opening themselves to be completely deceived by demon spirits because it gives the demon spirits an opportunity to impersonate the dead. So, who are they talking to? He says, the friendly demon spirits that have always found over the centuries great delight in impersonating in apparitions, departed loved ones, and persons of great renown. Then this, the medium said, we have a very special surprise tonight for you people. A spirit will manifest itself openly here in a few minutes. And it's, right, it's like a big gust of wind hit the building and right through the wall. <laughs> and that uh, translucent being seemed to come right out of the wall. How did you feel right at that moment? It's almost like my heart stopped a little bit. Okay. You know, very weird feeling. She it was a lady in a beautiful evening gown, floor length. And she said to, to Mary, my dear sister, you are so wonderful to have asked for me. And Mary fainted and fell right off her chair on the floor. <laughs> and a couple of guys jumped up and picked her up and uh, spread gone. And that was the beginning of it. That's how you got into it. Yeah, that's the way I got into it. After a while, you see, 
there's something interesting about the, the human uh, mind. You can adjust an awful lot of stuff. You can adjust to a lot of things that you that would terrify you to begin with. After a while, they become common and ordinary. Hmm. So you mean contact with the supernatural can become commonplace and ordinary and doesn't bother anybody? Yeah. In other words, the more that you do it, you're not uncomfortable. That's it's right. It's just not yeah. an uneasy feeling. Yeah. So but how then, do you feel about then it? Then I got into a secret society that worshipped the spirits, you see. Well, how did, okay, different. now, how, how is that different from the seance, Roger? 